Just imagine a force so powerful it could slice through solid rock like butter. 10,000 years ago, glaciers over a kilometer thick bulldozed through this landscape, gouging out what would become one of the most spectacular fjord lakes on Earth. What they left behind defies belief. A narrow corridor of impossibly deep water threading across mountain walls for 100 kilometers. This is Quenelle Lake. And as always, this is Ellie and welcome back to Urban Atlas. Now you're probably wondering, what is a fjord lake? You've probably heard of the term fjord, which is defined as a long, narrow sea inlet with steep sides or cliffs, usually created by a glacier. And these are found all over the world in countries such as New Zealand, Greenland, and Norway. But what exactly is a fjord lake? Well, it's quite similar to a fjord. It's created by the same process, but it's just not connected to the ocean or a sea. In fact, Canada has many fjord lakes. One famous example is the Western Brook Pond in the Gross Moor National Park on the western coast of Newfoundland. So back to Quenelle Lake. It sits in the heart of the Caribou region of British Columbia. At 266 square kilometers, it's roughly the same size as the country of Malta. Yet it receives a fraction of the visitors that flock to the more famous Canadian lakes. And like the other fjord lakes of Canada, what immediately grabs you when you see Lake Quenell is its sheer scale and dramatic setting. It looks like a 100 kilometer long ribbon of sapphire blue water carved between mountains. And its formation, well, it's a thing of geological beauty. Picture this. Glaciers over a kilometer thick grinding through ancient rock formations, creating what geologists call a fjord lake or ribbon lake. The result, a narrow, incredibly deep body of water. So deep that in fact many believe it's the deepest fjord lake in the world. It's the deepest lake in British Columbia and the third deepest lake in North America after the Great Slave Lake and Crater Lake. It has a maximum confirmed depth of 511 meters. But some experts claim that there might be sections that go even deeper. But the depth is just the beginning. The lake sits in what's called a structural trough, essentially a massive crack in the Earth's crust that was scoured clean by glaciers. The bedrock here consists primarily of Paleozoic and Mesozoic formations, some over 400 million years old. What's fascinating is how the lake's shape tells the story of ice movement. Notice how it's not perfectly straight, those curves and bends. Each one marks where ancient glaciers encounter different rock types, such as harder granite causing the ice to bend, softer sedimentary rocks allowing it to carve deeper channels. Along the shoreline, you'll find dramatic granite cliffs that plunge directly into the water. The lake's elevation sits at about 720 meters above sea level. It's surrounded by peaks that reach over 2,000 meters. This dramatic elevation change creates distinct ecological zones from the shoreline to the top of the mountain peaks. Quenelle Lake has two primary inflows, the Horsefly River and Mitchell River, and it has one primary outflow, the Quenelle River, which is actually a major tributary of the famous Fraser River. The shoreline of Quenelle Lake is distributed among three arms, the West Arm, the North Arm, and the East Arm. While all arms are fascinating in their own right, in my opinion, the most interesting is the North Arm. That's because in the furthest reaches of the North Arm, we can find ancient temperate rainforests, one of the rarest ecosystems on Earth. The total shoreline of Quenelle Lake is approximately 323 kilometers. Now, because the lake is located in an isolated area, there aren't many settlements along its shores. The largest is probably the community of Likely, located on the furthest sections of the western arm of Quenelle Lake. But this lake's story goes far deeper than just its geological formation. This area has been home to the Chilcotin First Nation for thousands of years, and their connection to this land runs as deep as the lake itself. The Chilcotin people called this area home long before European explorers arrived developing a sophisticated understanding of the lake's rhythms, its fish populations, 
and how to live sustainably in this sometimes harsh but always beautiful landscape. The lake gets its modern name from Jules Maurice Quenel, a French Canadian explorer who worked for Simon Fraser's Northwest Company. But here's the interesting part Quenel probably never even saw the lake that bears his name. The nearby town of Quenel was named after him, and the lake inherited that name later. During the gold rush of the 1860s, this region exploded with activity. Prospectors, traders, and fortune seekers flooded the Caribou region. But most rushed right past this lake and focused on the gold fields further north. In many ways, this saved the lake from environmental damage that affected other areas. The few hardy souls who did settle near the lake discovered something that the gold rush crowds missed. This was a place where you could build a life of quiet abundance. That's because the lake provided fish, the forest provided timber, and the isolation provided peace. Today, you can still find traces of this history scattered through the lake's shoreline, old logging camps, abandoned homesteads, and the occasional rusted piece of mining equipment. Now, here's where Quenel Lake gets really exciting. Because of its size, its relative isolation, and its diverse ecosystems, this lake supports abundant wildlife. Let's start below the surface. Lake Quenel is home to some of the best freshwater fishing in British Columbia. We're talking about lake trout that can reach over 20 kilograms, and that's a fish the size of a medium-sized dog. Rainbow trout, bull trout, kukunese salmon, and mountain whitefish all call these waters home. Above the water, Quenel Lake is a bird watcher's dream. Bald eagles nest along the shoreline. Osprey dive for fish in spectacular aerial displays. And during the migration season, the lake becomes a highway for countless waterfowl species. But in my opinion, the real stars of the show are the large mammals. Moose are common sights, especially in the shallow bays where they feed on aquatic vegetation. Black bears are frequent visitors to the shoreline as well. And while grizzly bears are far less common, they do occasionally make appearances in the more remote northern sections of the lake. Now, I need to address something that might surprise you about Quenel Lake. Despite its remote location and pristine appearance, this lake faces some serious environmental challenges that many visitors never see or hear about. The Caribou region has a long history of resource extraction, gold mining, logging, and more recently, large-scale mining operations. The Mount Pauly mine disaster in 2014 was a wake-up call for the entire region. When a tailings pond dam failed and released millions of cubic meters of contaminated water and sediment into the watershed and Quenel Lake. You see, the Mount Pauly Mining Corporation copper and gold mine sits approximately 9 kilometers upstream and 200 meters above the lake. On August 4th of 2014, the mine's impoundment wall failed, catastrophically releasing a host of materials that flowed into Polly Lake and then subsequently along Hazeltine Creek and eventually in the western basin of Quenel Lake. This catastrophic disaster temporarily deprived the residents of likely of fresh water. Interestingly, the BC Ministry of Environment has granted the Mount Polly Mining Corporation permission to drain mining waste directly into Quenel Lake. What the long-term effect of that plan will have on the ecology of Quenel Lake well, that remains to be seen. So there you have it. Quenelle Lake, BC's deepest lake, North America's third deepest lake, and the deepest fjord lake in the world. It's a place where pristine wilderness meets accessible adventure. And as always, if you like content like this, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.